In this video, I'm going to be introducing you to control algorithms. So I want you to think about this uh, situation. When you are sitting in a cold room or maybe a hot room, you want to go to the wall when you're hot and you want to turn on the air conditioner. Or if you're cold, you want to turn on the heater. These are things that, that you as a human are able to perceive on your own. You feel hot, so you're going to turn on the AC. Or you feel cold, so you're going to turn on the heater. There's no automation, there's no sensors involved here. This is just something that we, as people, can perceive on our own. Sensing our environment is something that all living things are able to do. Another way to think about this, which is closer to what we actually do on a day-to-day on -day basis, is we might look at the temperature and objectively say it is too hot or it is too cold and we want to do something about it. So this is not necessarily using our own internal sensors. This is looking at something outside and seeing, you know, I really would like it to be warmer in this room. So we have a temperature sensor which tells us what the temperature is. We might look at that temperature sensor and then say that's too cold. I'm going to turn on the air conditioner or turn on the heater which is the output. So we have an input, which is the temperature sensor, and we have the output, which is the air conditioner or the heater. But there's no automation here. This is a person still using the information from the sensor to make a decision and say, I'm going to turn on the heater so that I can get warm. Now, automated control is a little bit different. And this is what we talked about last semester. The idea here uh, is that we have an input that is a temperature sensor. And an automated system, a robot, a computer, can use some logic to decide when that heater needs to be turned on. So uh, simple logic, if the temperature is below 40 degrees, as I have in this slide, I'm going to turn on the heater. And if the temperature goes above 40 degrees, then I'm going to turn off the heater. So that's some simple can automated control. And this is something that you would have been able to do last semester based on the units that we studied together. Now the place where this gets slightly more complicated is the idea of control feedback. So this is where the input, which is the temperature sensor, causes the heater to turn on. And that heater then makes a direct change to the temperature that is read by the sensor. So we have some uh, that output, which is the, the heater, which is going to automatically increase the temperature in the room. So there's a connection between the output, which is the heater, that directly changes the input, which is the temperature sensor. You don't always have that connection between an output and an input, where the output directly changes the input. Last semester when we were dealing with buttons, uh, you could hit a button that would turn on a light, but that light didn't necessarily change the button being pressed or not. So there's a direct connection between the output, which in this case is the heater, and the temperature sensor reading, which is obviously the, the temperature in the room. And so what closes this to be something that we call a feedback control loop is that the temperature sensor causes something to happen with the output, which then changes the input because the temperature in the room is going to go up. We're going to use some logic to check and see should the heater still be on. And the input changes the output, which changes the input, which changes the output. And it goes over and over and over and over again until ideally the temperature stays at 40 degrees Celsius. This is a feedback control loop. This is the reverse of what we did first semester. First semester we talked about uh, for a given input, what do we want the outputs to be? But in a control loop, we are using the outputs to make the input to our system what we want it to be. So we're using the heater to change the temperature in the room. Control algorithms are how you allow an automated system to use sensor feedback and a controlled output to change that sensor to the value that you want. And this could be heating a container of water to keep it at 40 degrees Celsius. 
It could be in a robot arm, you are raising an arm until it is horizontal. So turn that motor until the arm is where you want it to be. Or you can imagine talking about driving a, a robot. It could be steering the robot so that it stays in the middle of the road or driving a robot forward until it is one meter from the wall. So this is the idea behind a control algorithm. What I've done for you today is I've created two situations where you can start thinking through the idea behind a control algorithm. The first is a container that has the temperature, where you click on the container, you turn on the heater, which increases the temperature. And the goal here is to try to keep that temperature as close to 40 degrees Celsius as you can. When the heater turns off, the container is going to cool down. That's naturally what happens when you have something hot in an environment that is not as hot. And so you can see me in, in this little animation trying to do this. At the end, after about 30 seconds, it will give you all of the data for temperature versus time. You can take that data, copy it, and then paste it right into Desmos, which will make it so that you can see how well you were able to do in keeping the temperature close to 40 degrees Celsius. In this simulation, we have an arm that is attached to a motor on a robot. And the idea there is that we want to give a certain amount of power to that robot arm and turn it so that it is a certain angle from the vertical. So you can see some dotted lines there. You want to turn that motor until it is 30 degrees from the horizontal, 45, 60, 90 degrees, and so on. You can imagine when the arm is hanging down, if you want to move it this way, you need to give it a little bit of power. But once you get to 30 degrees, if you shut the power down, it's just going to hang back at zero. So if you want to hold it at a certain angle, you need to apply the right amount of power to first get it to the angle you want it to be at, and also hold it to that angle. And this is trickier than you might think, and you'll get a chance to play around with this when you use the simulation. I've given you uh, a few different angles uh, that this is going at, 90, 120, 150, 135, no, I had those numbers wrong, sorry. In all of these cases, you should be able to identify the input that's being used. So what is the sensor that is measuring the quantity that we want to control. You also should be able to identify the output. In the case of the heating the container, the output is the heater because that is what we are using to control the temperature. In the case of the robot arm, we are using the motor power as the output to try to get the input, which is the angle of the arm from the vertical to be what we want it to be. And the method is the algorithm. The method is how we are using the input to control the output and create that feedback loop so that the, the input is what we want it to be. So you should very clearly be able to uh, state this about any control problem that you're trying to use. In the case of the heater, I'm using the value, a Boolean value of the heater being on or off to control the value of the ball temperature. In the case of the arm, I'm using the value of motor power to control the value of arm angle. Uh, this is what we are talking about when we're talking about control algorithms. In some of the tasks that I'm going to have you do, you are going to identify what is the input, what is the end output, and what might be an effective method for controlling the input and output in a few different control system scenarios. So I hope you enjoy those activities. Uh, it's good to have you back, and we'll see you next time.